Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into everything you need to know before buying an electric bike. So you're thinking about buying an e-bike, but with all the options out there, how do you start? In this video, we'll cover the particulars on e-bike classes and types, batteries, motors, brakes, comfort and fit, and the all-important pricing support and warranty considerations. When you are deciding on buying an e-bike, you need to consider, what am I going to be using this e-bike for? That is the first decision you need to make before even starting your journey. Will you be using the bike to commute or carry precious cargo? Is it more for adventure and off-roading? Will you be mainly trail riding? Or maybe you need a compact, more easily transported bike? Be honest with your needs. That's what's going to guide your decision making. So let's break it down. There are three classes of e-bikes. Hello! Hi! Hi! Hi, traveling fans! So nice to meet Hi, you! Nice to meet you! I was hoping you could show me class one e-bikes. Yeah, absolutely. So we have some over here. So these are class ones. Uh, what that means is that they are going to assist you up to 20 miles an hour. Okay. Uh, and there's no throttle on them. So everything that you're doing is human powered. It's just a machine takes a little bit of that and gives it back to you. But they're gonna be perfect for your casual riding, maybe some shorter distance commuting, um, riding with your family, riding on paved trails, uh, really anything up to about 40, maybe 45, 50 miles. It's a good distance you're gonna get on one of these. If you're planning to ride on bike paths or in areas with e-bike restrictions, class one is usually your safest bet. But if you want a little more speed or throttle control, class two might be worth a look. Class two e-bikes also have pedal assist and a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour. However, it has a throttle. That is a feature that allows you to control the bike's motor power without pedaling by twisting a handle or pressing a button. It is a fantastic option for people with physical limitations because the throttle can help you get going from a stop position easier. It is great for recreational riding, commuting, and especially fantastic for longer trails because it has that option of the throttle. Class 3 e-bikes have pedal assist and are powerful with a max speed of 28 miles per hour. They are commonly used by longer distance commuters and by off-road adventurers because the bike can handle the challenging terrain. Now that you know the three classes, you can move on to style. There are a lot of choices, but to keep from getting overwhelmed, e-bike sellers offer handy online quizzes to guide you. Some of the main styles are the city commuter, designed to be a practical alternative to cars and public transport. Cruiser e-bikes, which include an upright saddle position paired with swept back handlebars designed for recreation and leisure riding. Off-road and fat tire utilize large knobby tires to handle many different terrains and foldable, which have hinges on the frame, handlebar, and even the pedals for convenient transportation and storage. Battery is a big deal. It controls how far you can go and how often you're gonna need to charge. Once you start getting into like all the e-bike stuff, the wattage and the voltage because there's so many options yeah it becomes very overwhelming yes we've and noticed that it gets really technical like yes. peak power versus peak voltage versus really, really yeah really quick the aspect of the battery can indeed get confusing because there are just so many factors involved when determining how far a bike can go on a single charge. There is even a mathematical formula, volt times amp hours equals watt hours, to determine this. But for the sake of this video, let's just focus on watt hours, or the measure of electrical energy equivalent to the power consumption. Most entry-level e-bikes come with a 250 watt hour battery, while mid and higher end models usually have 500 watt hour or more. Across all price points, e-bike batteries may be either integrated into the bike, requiring on-bike charging, or designed to be removable, allowing you to detach the battery for off-bike charging at a more convenient location. So back to watt hours. You can think of watt hours like the size of a car's gas tank. The bigger it is, the farther you can go on a single charge. A 250 watt hour battery might give you around 15 to 25 miles, and a 500 watt hour battery can often take you 30 to 50 miles, but it depends on how much you pedal, the terrain, the type of motor, and whether you're using a throttle or just pedal assist. More watt hours generally means more range, but it can also make the bike a little heavier and more expensive. 
A larger battery typically weighs one to two extra pounds. It's not a huge difference, but if you plan on riding where you may come across trail hazards or you are a person that has lifting concerns, it's worth keeping in mind. It gets back to use when determining what's going to be right for you. For everyday riding, like commuting or weekend trails, a 500 watt hour battery offers a good balance of range and practicality. But if you're mostly doing short, flat rides, a 250 watt hour battery may be more than enough. Oh, yeah. is this, this is an e-bike as well, isn't it? That one is an e-bike. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the hub-driven ones. So oh, okay, yeah, it's a rear hub, isn't it? Yep. Okay, okay. The motor is another aspect that can get pretty technical, but for simplicity's sake, let's just focus on two basic choices, the mid-drive, or MD, and the hub-drive, or HD. The battle between which is best boils down to your riding style, the expected terrain, and your budget. A hub drive, which is more common, is located inside either the front or rear wheel. It's more affordable, simpler to maintain, and suitable for commuting and casual riding. The mid drives are typically located at the bottom bracket between the pedals. They offer riders a balanced feel, are more efficient than the hub, and give better performance on hills and rough terrain. But they are more expensive and can require more maintenance. So the bottom line is, if you're thinking of an e-bike that is easy, consistent, and budget-friendly, look for an HD motor. But if you're more serious, need to carry heavy loads, or plan to be riding in rough terrain, the investment into the more expensive MD motor may be a better option. Next up on things to consider when purchasing an e-bike is the braking system. Mechanical brakes are a popular choice because they're affordable and easy to maintain. If a cable snaps or stretches, you can fix it yourself with basic tools. But a big drawback I've experienced firsthand is their performance and wet conditions. On rainy rides, I notice a clear decrease in my stopping power, which can be a bit unnerving. Well, we learned another valuable lesson back there at the Great Snake Turnaround. The mechanical brakes on her e-bike, when they get wet, she loses an awful lot of stopping power. She is able to stop, but I would say it takes her about twice as much distance to stop. In comparison, hydraulic brakes offer superior stopping power even in wet conditions and require less maintenance. They are typically more expensive and harder to repair yourself without the right tools, but the added safety and reliability are absolutely worth it. You are going to be spending hours on this e-bike, so make sure it fits and feels good. Start with the frame. Most e-bike sellers will offer a variety of frame sizes and styles. Choose an e-bike that will fit your height, and if you have mobility issues, lean towards a step-through instead of the traditional triangular frame. Next, look for suspension features in the fork and seat post, and adjustable components in the saddle, handlebars, and stem to fine-tune your riding position. Oh yeah, you absolutely have to check out this handlebar adjustment on this thing. Cool. Yeah. I mean, check. I was thinking about the ride the other day where your lower back started hurting. But check this out. Just, just watch this. So this is so cool. This has an adjustable. It's the gazelle switch. So basically, you pull this down and you pull this lever up, and Look now you can adjust. <gasps> oh my word, that is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. you don't need like the extra <laughs> riser, so you can yeah. sit more upright if your lower back starts hurting. Yep. And it doesn't take any extra tools to adjust it. Like on yep. some of those, you do have to have a multi-tool to be able to go in and adjust. That and is very simple. Around. And finally, ensure the controller is within easy reach while riding and that the display remains clear and visible even in bright sunlight. Although addressed last in this video, price, support, and warranty are certainly not least. E-bikes come in a wide range of prices. Entry-level models typically start around $800 and go to $1,500. Mid-range fall between $1,500 and $3,000, and high-end models can go $3,000 and up. At the entry level, you'll get a smaller watt-hour battery, so shorter riding range before needing to recharge, and typically, but not always, a hub drive motor and mechanical brakes. This price level is good for casual or short distance riding, but many entry level bikes can have upgrades added, such as a longer range battery. At the mid and high end price points, the core structure of the e-bike is largely the same. The models typically come with higher capacity batteries for better range, upgraded mid drive motors for improved performance, and more responsive hydraulic brakes for enhanced control. No matter your budget, make sure the brand offers reliable customer support and access to service. Most local bike shops will only service the brands they sell, so check where you will get your support before buying. If something does go wrong, the warranty is your safety net. Companies will typically list their warranty and service information on their website. Make sure the warranty covers the frame and the electrical components of the motor, battery, and display controller. A solid warranty for an e-bike should be at least one year for the electronics. It's typically two and at least three years for the frame. 
So remember, the most important aspect when you're in the market for an e-bike is how will you use your bike and what type of terrain you will ride it on. After that is determined, the other aspects of the battery, motor, brakes, and of course, style and fit will fall into place. We hope this guide has helped you on your journey to find that perfect e-bike and be sure to check out our channel for ride inspiration to get you rolling.